for other than to commend the bill to the House. Kia ora. I call Hari Tehi Pango. Thank you. Look, I stand to attention to take this call on the second reading, uh, and uh, I'm. I'm grateful that I'm able to address the House again, because I did in the first reading, on this Military Justice Legislation Amendment Bill. And I'm grateful because of the fact that I, I do have a connection personally and professionally in speaking to this legislation, professionally having practised in law, and this is a piece of legislation, proposed law, soon to be passed, I am confident that it will be. Uh, where there is a better alignment of the military justice system with our, um, as my friend across the house there, Ms Lewisa Wall, uh, mentioned a normal court or a, a, a usual court, I would say that it's the, our criminal justice system, so it's an alignment. And the purpose of this legislation is around aligning, updating and enhancing. The other personal connection that I have is very much, as I've indicated and shared with the House before, is the military background. So my family has given military service since the 1850s through to date. So this is quite personal, but it's also professional in being able to address the House and members of the public in this um, reformation, reshaping of the military justice uh, legislative system. So, being the last speaker, most of the significant messages have been conveyed to the House and the public, and my time is limited, uh, and I'd be grateful for Madam Chair, Madam Speaker, to keep a check on my time, because I've just lost it on my phone. You can be assured I will. Yep. Uh, you have um, eight minutes and 22 seconds. Thank here. you. I'm taking a brief call on this. Uh, but the three key areas that I, I would wish to address the House in is really along the lines of the areas that I've practised in. One is around the uh, victims' rights, and this legislation is certainly acknowledging and enhancing victim rights under the, uh, the bill, the Act to Be. It's also, as we've heard, around a, re repealing a provision in the Armed Forces Discipline Act that has placed the onus of proof on the accused. Now, this is reshaping and aligning it with our criminal justice system. And, uh, uh, that the onus of proof is on the prosecution, and no longer would it be just on the balance of pro probabilities, it would be beyond a reasonable doubt, and that's so significant and important. So, victims, uh, the rights there have been addressed in detail, and that is covered specifically under the bill itself in part 10A, outlining, for example, victims' rights, having views about release on bail of the accused or the offender. As a criminal lawyer for many years, also a family lawyer, actually, um, representing many women and sometimes men who are victims of uh, domestic violence, that uh, entitled to be enlightened about what is happening in terms of the offender and the conditions that they may be released on bail. Part 10A of the bill, soon to be act, addresses that in detail. The other part that I do wish also to speak to, and I mentioned it in the first address to the House, is around the uh, provision of fitness to stand trial. So the bill is aligning where an accused is deemed to be unfit to stand trial, and noting also that under the Courts Matters Bill, uh, it is seeking to amend the Criminal Procedure Mentally Impaired Persons Act, where I've represented, and there's been um, the fact that a hearing had to take place to establish whether a person was unfit or otherwise before it was deemed that the act had been um, committed or omitted. So this is very much aligning, the, and with an amendment to the bill before the, the Justice Committee, I believe, that there will be a reversal of the, the sequence. So it will be very much about first determining whether the person who has a mental impairment is fit to stand trial, then determining whether the defendant was actually involved in the commission or the omission of the offence. So, Madam Chair, I have been instructed to take a brief call on this. The details are there within the Act. I have spoken and addressed those particular provisions that I've uh, practised in law, and it's significant now uh, that the military justice system is aligned and in accord with what everybody else is entitled to in terms of our criminal justice system. I commend this bill to the third passage of the reading. Kia ora. Te māngai o te whare. I call um, Anahila Kanongo Taha Sui Sui Ki. Uh, kia ora na, um, te māngai. It's an absolute pr privilege uh, to take the...